Okay, no intro, we don't really have time. We are packing at the moment to head up to Grafton to Inverell, which got me thinking we're going to a bike race. I need to explain a few things to you about the structure of the team, the workings of it, all that kind of stuff. It's one of the main reasons I started doing this vlog in the first place. A month or two ago, actually a bit longer, right back at the beginning of the year, I did a vlog up here, here, somewhere. Equipment for bikes, for components, how that links into the team from the team perspective, from the rider's perspective, what sort of expenses are going. Anyway, check out that vlog. It has a Chris rant in it. But what I did want to explain, guys, is racing okay so for example the tour of brisbane which i'll link the vlogs up here and up here really fantastic race but guys that cost the team about ten thousand dollars okay that's accommodation logistics equipment all that kind of stuff not including time purely just the logistics and administration and i don't say that to you as a kind of oh whoa look at us we have to put all this money that's not what i mean at all i just wanted to be honest with you really and explain that that's the kind of well, funding that's involved in getting a team to a race like that in my experience so far and i reckon you might find this kind of interesting i've kind of determined that there are really three categories of three categories of people things that kind of stuff that are putting money into cycling the first one, obviously, is the equipment partner, the cycling equipment partner, obvious one. They have a vested interest in cycling, so to be seen racing domestically is beneficial to them. The second one, and these people get such a hard time, you've heard it a million times, right? The, uh, oh, this team's only there because this dad's funding this one, or this, this mum's funding this team because of the daughter. Who cares? They're putting money into cycling. Shut up. Nepotism is a good thing as far as I'm concerned in this particular situation. The third one, <laughs> the third one is the mystery one for me. And th this is the one that I'm learning more and more about. The successful entrepreneur, the successful business, the, the, the passion project for want of a better term. We have one of those people who support us um, here or here. We have Phil and he, he is passionate about cycling. He's a very good cyclist, I might add, was the breakaway with him at Westhead. So what I thought I'd do is I would chase him up and ask him that question. Like, why? And, well, what do you expect from us? So I'm not sure your results necessarily mean more exposure for me, I guess. I actually like seeing you guys go out, work extremely hard, and then I see on the vlog you all sitting down with your, your head in your hands and you're, you're absolutely flat after giving it all. I mean, prior to me watching what you were doing, I would have never have watched an NRS race. Wouldn't know it was even going on. Now we get some kind of behind the scenes access. Work out a way to leverage off all the social media that you were doing. Whether something came of it or nothing. But obviously the point is to try and be introduced to people, have conversations about what we do. We help hundreds of people basically, you know, with any question they've got to do with money. Um, you know, we're managing a lot of people's superannuation or investments or giving them advice on how to minimise tax. I would have thought amongst your network. It doesn't take a lot. You only need to meet a few people who say, oh, I didn't know Phil did that. Or, yeah, I've been looking for someone to have a chat to. And maybe something comes of it. The thing I love about Nero is the present yourselves really well, and so do the guys. I've gotten to know Angus a little bit over time, and, you know, there couldn't be anyone that represents you and the brand better. You know, even out at Blaney to Bathurst the other weekend, just talking to one of your younger guys, you know, just so friendly, warm, open, and really representing, I guess, the brand well. So that's what gave me the confidence that it's not going to be a bad thing for my business to be associated with that, regardless of what comes with it. From a Welcome to the trip to Grafton, and cheers to uh, to Phil for that chat. Uh, there's Lee, Bentley, and Jesse. Um, 
So the reason I kind of wanted to bring up and have a chat to Phil about putting the funding, because it all costs money. Here's the thing, right? I've never been into a meeting with any prospective sponsor and said to them, uh, here's a men's bike racing team, and they've said, wow, where do I sign up? You need to sell yourself as, we have a roster of 12 riders. Um, I can guarantee to you, we'll put on a Zwift group ride every week on a Wednesday night. Every month, we'll put on a group ride. All your clients can come and we'll appear here for this, we'll appear here for that. Um, and this will be your return on investment. You need to sell the team as a product, not just a, not just sell an idea to someone. Like patent That's that. Right. One thing that we as a bike team, all bike teams can do, do better, is like engage the actual sponsors. So for example, like he's saying there, why not be the team that runs the ride for that company? Let's say for example, the Commonwealth Bank. Commonwealth Bank. We are going to run your ride every Tuesday. So we've got some guys in Melbourne, we've got some guys in Sydney, they're going to be at your office 6am every second Thursday. I reckon that's kind of the next step for bike racing. Well, no, not bike racing, like bike teams as such. Yeah. Good idea, Lee. We should do that. Because putting a t-shirt, putting a thing on a t-shirt, it's done. Alright, end screen time. Point. Subscribe, comment, Strava. No. And our main screen. Wait, what was this one again? <laughs> take, take 12. Dog. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs>